treat. And trust me, we're going to look into it and treat all those things. So tonight, I have about 10 qualities I want to quickly you know, run through and share with us this is based on life, ex life, you know, um, scenarios, life, ex life scenarios I've been through personally, you know, and um, not only what I've been through, I've been in protocol for 18 years plus, 18 years, yes, 18 years plus, and I've served both in, a re in religious organizations, I've served in government, yes, I've served in government, I've also served, you know, in the business world. So I have, I have a three-fold, you know, experience of, of of this thing and trust me we're going to be taking a good flight um this moment we want to pour ourselves we want to we want to learn from you yes we want to learn from because no one knows it all and i i will also share the little i know so one of the the the, the, the first thing i was saying something one of the reviews we got last week was someone said we, sh we should give time we should give time request to okay thank you someone said we should give time we should give time, you know, for questions. So I want to see if we can give like 20 minutes for questions tonight. I want to see if we can give 20 minutes for questions tonight. So let's roll in. Qualities of a good protocol officer. The first thing I'm going to talk about as one of the major, major qualities, you know, of a good protocol officer is ability to adapt to stress. Can I say that again? The ability to adapt to stress yes now trust me trust me when i say this as a protocol officer as an executive assistant as a personal assistant as a confidential secretary as a security aide you know and you can fill in the blanks trust me trust me trust me you are going to go through a lot of stress this work requires us to have ability to withstand stress yes it goes to it because you are likely to be the last to see your principal when he's going to sleep you are likely to be the first to resume yes so you can imagine when the receptionist when the hr when um, all these other people when they've all left and they've closed for the day you can imagine you being the protocol officer you being a personal assistant you being the chief of staff You've been, you've been an executive assistant. You are still standing by with the, with, with the principal, with your boss, because you cannot leave him in the office. And some of us that also work with bosses that, you know, uh, when you close in the office, that is phase one. You now move to phase two. That is, you know, when you, you, you start to work from the house of the boss, right? And you may not leave there until 2 a.m. It all depends on who you are working with. It all depends on who your principal is, and the kind of uh, work you do, right? But you know, um, I was, I was, I was. You know, I, I, I give myself some couple of hours to do self development every day. And one of the things, one of the lectures I was taking yesterday, and they were talking. I saw, I saw one of the blunders. Yes, one of the diplomatic blunders that I saw. You know, yesterday was a particular prime minister. He was addressing uh, a major congress. He was addressing a major congress, and he, he dozed off. <laughs> can you beat? Can you can you can you imagine that he was addressing the major congress and he dozed off? Yeah, because it all depends on who you are working with. Stress is key. As a protocol officer, you and I must be able to adapt to stress. Yes, you may you may not have eight hours of sleep. It all depends on your work. It all depends who you are working with. Also, it all depends on what you are doing. You may not have eight hours of sleep. Yes, yes. It, and especially when you now have a program or you have a guest, you know, coming, you are part of the, pre you know, of course, you are part of every process, the preparation stage, the execution stage. You are part of all the processes. I tr trust me, definitely you are going to have stress. So one of the qualities of any good protocol officer, and if you want to build a career, in protocol, you must know that, see, trust me, this work comes with stress. It comes with st stress. You don't want to work in government. When, when I was serving in the government, when I was working in one of the, you know, one of the, uh, gov with one of the governors some years ago, I, I, I could tell you, I can tell you categorically that many a times, you know, I resume, maybe 7 a.m., 
depending on maybe he's going to see the president that day uh maybe you know different different schedules they have itinerary well written out and they are working back to back that's why i said to us never be part of those that complain you know or that says ah can you imagine our leaders they are sleeping in congress you don't know when that man took his nap you don't know when he slept yes you have all the time to watch netflix they don't watch netflix they don't watch netflix so trust me stress is is, is sure when it comes to protocol stress is sure so the ability to adapt to stress you know is one of the qualities that makes you a good protocol officer the ability to to that you don't break yes that you don't break yes you don't break at no point you can go the long haul you can go the long haul so kindly tick yourself put yourself on the scale the work you are doing at the moment are you can you go the long haul Yes, can you work 24 hours? Can you work 72 hours at a stretch consecutively? Yes, that, so that is key. That is key, that is major. So if you want to build a career in protocol, you want to work in, you know, you want to work with top executives, trust me, you want to work with top government officers, trust me, you are going to be able to withstand stress. Yes. Because they're going to give you crazy deadlines. You know, in, in the banking industry, fine, I know they give marketers, you know, a particular XY, uh, XYZ figures to bring in, but your own case is different. You may have to work as a PA, you have to work as an executive assistant, you have to work as a security detail, you have to work at a, as, as, a, as, as a personal protection officer. Your work is so much. Your work is so much. So trust me, you know, stress ability to adapt to stress makes you one of you know it, it makes you a good protocol officer the second thing i'm going to talk about tonight is quality time you need to give quality time to this work mm -hmm. quality time it's so important you know that you know it that your work will request it's going to require that you stay you know after everybody has have long gone i just said it earlier after everybody has closed from the office you are still going to stay back with the boss. Yeah, you may be even be working in his, from his house. You may be in your house at the same time you don't have time for yourself because you are making this call, you are checking up on this person, you know, you are, you know, you are, you are arranging, you are preparing his itinerary for the following day, the, following, the next month, you are getting bookings for him. It all depends. So quality time, this work requires quality time. Even at midnight, you could even be at home you, could, you, you can be at home and trust me, you know, I'm back home. So if you hear my, my, my son crying, I apologize for that. So I'm, I'm, I'm back home. So can we, can we just go ahead tonight? Now, I, I was saying something, quality time. So this is going to, this is going to require, this is going to, uh, quality time, you need quality time. Your work requires quality time. In the sense, in the sense that even at night, your, your principal could call you at 12 a.m., it could call you even after you have gone home. It could call you at 2 a.m. Yes, it could call you at any of this time. So this work requires quality time. Quality time have to be given to it. Because if, see, if you are going to have, do a good preparation stage, you know, for receiving a guest, it requires you investing good quality time to do your principal profile, to do your threat and risk assessment, to do your roots uh root 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 selection and the likes you, you understand this would require you know quality time thank god for technology today you know before the coronavirus issue came up you know we've always believed in the traditional way of having meetings which is face to face but over the last for the last two months now everybody has learned to use zoom right so the world is after the the post world post covid you know uh post covid all of us will definitely continue to use this app you know we are all using the zoom to have our meetings so now but that doesn't make the work will reduce yes it even means you are in your house and you are still working can you imagine that can you beat that so it's so important please quality time is very key it's one of the qualities one of the qualities you know of a good protocol officer so when you are getting into this industry you need to give quality time one you need to be able to withstand stress it's so important i hope you're getting uh, getting it tonight 
Also, the third thing I'm going to talk about tonight is you've got to be patient. Can I say that again? You've got to be patient. Patience is a virtue for protocol officers. Can I say that again? Patience is a virtue for protocol officers. You cannot just snap at every little thing, even huge thing. You can't snap. You can't just fight. You can't just fight back. You can't just, you can't just, you can't raise your voice. Yeah, you've got to require a lot of patience. Yeah, a protocol officer doesn't fight all the times. Yes, no. Yeah, but yeah the person, quite all right, the person tr try to intrude, you know, to your principal or to meet your, your boss. It doesn't make sure that it doesn't mean that every time you have to shout or you have to fight the person, you have to take the person to the police station. No, it requires a lot of patience. It requires a lot of patience. At the, at, at the same time, if you are not patient, you are not likely to invest quality time. If you're not patient, you are likely to snap at the person because you are stressed. So patience is a very good quality of a protocol officer. You've got to have a lot of patience. Calm down, calm down. Um, don't talk before you think. Think before you talk. Do you understand that? Don't talk and think. Because if you're not patient, enough sometimes you could have said something that was not nice you could have done something that wasn't good so calm down what do i say calm down you know if somebody just got you angry please calm down don't react don't react immediately hold your peace right weigh the options right when you weigh the options you are likely to take the best decision but if you are someone that rushes to, you know, to, to, to take a decision, which is a key, a quality of protocol officer, which is, you must be apt. You must be able to take a decision like this, right? But at the same time, patience is a virtue. Patience is a virtue, you know, for protocol officers. And you need to understand that. Now, one of the, you need to understand that you are in a high demanding job. Your job is I demand is I demanding. Yes, it's I demanding. So it's a it's a call you, you you need to understand when you know your job is I demanding, it helps your patient level. Yes, it helps your patient's level. When you know your job is I demanding, it also helps it helps your stress level. It helps you not to, you know, to be able to manage stress. Yeah, it helps you to manage stress. Then also it also helps you, you know. It helps you, uh, what's it called, when it gets to time, investing quality time, knowing that your work is high demand. That's why the principal, your principal, your boss will not call the secretary or the receptionist or um, an account executive at 2 a.m., but he could call you. Now, can I say this quickly? Does the work of protocol officer, is the work of protocol officer 8 to 5 job? No. The work of a protocol officer is not 8 to 5. It's until when you are released. Did you hear that? The job of a protocol officer is not an 8 to 5 job. It's not the regular 8 to 5 job that every other person, you know, does. Yes, it, it isn't. The job of a, you know, of a protocol officer is a 24-hour job. Yeah, you have to understand that. It's a 24-hour job. Trust me. Yes, your boss can release you, you know, I've had... I've, I have some principal, I have a particular principal. My principal, will, my, this, my, my, this particular principal will tell me, okay, so, um, the mother, so you, you should be closing now. Uh, you should be closing now. Ask me what time is that closing now? 2 a.m. 2.30 a.m. And he said, so you should be closing now so you can rest. Mm -hmm. So you can rest. And, um, you know, you have to come early in the morning. You have to... Rest very well. My boss will say, uh, this is my principal will say, rest very well, Lou. rest very well. Uh, so I'll see you by 7.30. Yes, 7.30 is fine. <laughs> Can you imagine that? I'm leaving the house of my principal, 2.30 a.m. And my principal is telling me, so you have to be going now so that you can rest very well. So you can rest very well. And um, uh, so rest very well, Lou. rest very well. And I'll see you 7.30. Yes, report back 7.30. Have you been in that situation? <laughs> I've, I've been there severally and I'm there. I'm there <laughs> presently. Do you understand? So trust me, the work of a protocol officer is 24 hours. You can be called anytime. You can be called upon anytime. 
Now, one of the qualities of a good protocol officer is this also. It's not everything you get to request your right requisition for. Your finance also goes into it. Yes, finance is major. As a protocol officer, it's not every time you're going to, um, you know, maybe your principal gives you, an, gives you an assignment and you're waiting for him to give you the money for it. No, go and do it. Go and do it. Trust me. So finance is key. Putting your finance in your job is a good quality. Did you get that? Putting your finance, yes, putting your finance in this protocol job that you are doing is a good quality. So one of, one of these is not just, you know, um, um, you, you need to put your finance. Yes, you need to put your finance into it. You know, you need to put your finance. It's going to cost you, you know, finance. And finance in the sense of getting a good suit. Yeah, get a good attire. Get a good suit. Don't wear shoes. Do you understand that? Don't wear coat. Wear a good suit. Yes. Wear a good suit, not coat. Not shoot. You know, there are parachutes and there's suit. <laughs> so you want to get a good suit. Yeah. Invest in good shirts. Not the shirt that when you wore you, you wore the shirt, the the color comes out like this. It gets here. So your tie is not starting from here. Can you imagine that? It, it requires finance. You have to invest. Your principal may not invest, may not do that for you. That may be your responsibility. So you put your money in the job by doing what? Go for trainings. We just I just told you about the professional protocol online training, you know, that we are we are doing. I just told you about that training. Come for the training. Yes, go online, go on Coursera. You will see trainings there on communication. You see training there on patience, on conflict management. You see training there on, you know, lots more can give you the list. Yes, right, and you may pay for it. Who will they who will they promote? It's you. You've got to invest in you. Yes. You've got to invest. Don't wait for your boss to invest in you. Take the initiative. Start first. Yeah. Start first. So this thing requires finance. Finance, training yourself. Yes. Getting a good cloth, a good suit. I just told you, don't wear coats. Don't wear shoes. Wear a good suit. Getting good shoes. Good shoes. Some of us, the shoes we wear are rubber shoes. Rubber shoes in the sense that, um, you know those shoes they wear for casual corporates? You are wearing it for a corporate job. No, invest in yourself. You've got to invest in yourself. Your appearance matters. Yes. You kept saying that your principal did not want to go with you. Why will he go with you? Because you are not properly dressed. Yeah. You are not looking good. You are not sharp. There's no friction on your air. See, friction. There must be friction. Did you understand that? There must be friction. You must... Now, can I tell you the truth? It depends on how fast your air grows. If you are, you know, someone that, you know, uh, you have a lot of air, you may need to be barbing every week or thrice in a week to look neat. To look neat. So it's so important, please. It's so important. Training is important. You invest in training. Invest in training. Come for the making of a seven-star protocol officer. Go for other courses as well. Do you understand? Invest in training. Invest in your appearance. Get good ties. Don't go and buy those uh, under naira ties. All those ones that are tired. They are tired already before you bought them. Hmm? Invest in appearance. Yes. Get good bracelets. Get good wristwatch. Right. Get good shoes. Get good belts. You want to see a man? Look at his shoes, look at his belt, look at his wristwatch. Then check his haircuts. Friction. Appearance is key. You need to invest in all of this. Um, it makes you, a, you know, one of the good qualities of a good protocol officer. The next thing I'm going to talk about tonight is this job protocol is sacrifice. It's a sacrificial job. It, it's going to involve you to sacrifice a lot. Yeah, you are going to need to sacrifice a lot. You know, stop seeing your boss as the bad person. Mm, that he, does, he doesn't even look at time. He doesn't look at time. He doesn't look at time. No, nah, stop seeing your boss that way. Stop seeing your boss that way. So you, 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 it requires high sacrifice. 
Sacrifice is part of this job. So how sacrificial are you? Sacrifice could come also, you've closed 10, 8, 10 p.m. And suddenly while you are going home, your boss calls you and says, oh, I need you to help me pick something at, um, at a particular pharmacist. And you are grumbling. No. No, no. It's sacrifice. The work requires a lot of sacrifice. It requires a lot of sacrifice because you're not going to close when everybody has closed. You're not going to resume when everybody, you know, people are going to leave you in the office and they're going to meet you at the office the following day. So this work requires a lot of sacrifice. Sacrifice in managing your spouse. Yeah. You have to learn to find a way to balance and manage your wife. And if, you are, if the wife is the protocol officer, you need to manage your husband. Yeah. You need to manage your husband. It's part of the job. It's part of the thought. It comes with it. As a protocol officer, you know, as a protocol officer, you know, sacrifice is key. Yeah. So you, you need to manage your spouse. Yeah, because I can imagine, you know, um, uh, just Im imagine because your work is demanding. That's why I said this work is eye demanding. Imagine that um, maybe on Christmas, can you imagine on Christmas and your principal wants you to go with him and it's why your wife is left behind. How do you do that? How do you do that? So it requires a lot of sacrifice. Yeah. You're not able to take the children every time out. It requires a lot of sacrifice. Before you say you want to be a protocol officer, count the costs. It's expensive. Yeah. This, the cost is, is, is expensive. Yes. You, 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 wouldn't have, you wouldn't even have time for yourself. You don't even eat regularly. It's part of it. It comes with sacrifice. So sacrifice is key. One of the qualities, again, of a good protocol officer is you have to be a good communicator. Communication is key. You must learn to be a good communicator. Yes. Because if you are the type that, you know, you, you, you are not good at it, you're going to have a lot of issues. You must learn how to communicate with those that are up, the uplines. You must learn how to communicate with your colleagues, the people you are on the same level. You must learn how to communicate with the downlines. Yeah. You must learn how to communicate with your teammates, your team members. Communication is good. It is so important. I understand you want them to get this thing, but communicate it well. Communicate it appropriately. So you must be a good communicator. You must be someone that uses... You know that you're so oratory. Yeah, it's so important because you have to be able to use the command. You have to be able to use, you know, words to drive them to do what you want to do. Don't forget leadership is influence. A leader is someone that can influence others. So leadership is influence. So use your communication, you know, you, you use your com and in communication, you know, they did um there was there was a there was a there was a there was there was, there was a research that was carried out uh, at the University of California. There was a research that was carried out at the University of California, and guess what happened? They broke down communication into three. Yes, they said um, uh, seven percent of communication is seven percent. There's thirty-eight percent, and there is fifty-eight percent. And guess what? Let me let me show you to you. Let me show you to you. Yeah, words. Words are what the words you are saying, right? As is seven percent. When they did the research on communication, they said the words you speak, you are able to communicate. You know, it's just seven percent of the entire hundred percent of communication. How did you communicate it? How do you say it? Communication is key, so you have to be a good communicator. It's so important, you know, to do that. And they said thirty-eight percent is voice. Your tone. Hey! You can imagine. You shouted. You can, you, did you see how you felt when I did like, hey? A tone, 38% is voice. You know, when they did this research at the University of California on communication, 7% is the, are actually the words you are speaking out. But they said 38% of this is voice. How did you say it? Your tone, high or low? The volume, your volume, 
the volume of your, you know, the way you said it, your pitch, 38%. And guess what? 55% body language. 55% body language. So communication is not just saying what you're saying. You could say, I'm not harassing you as I'm talking to you tonight. I'm not harassing you. You know, I could be harassing, but say, yeah, 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 you know, that is harassing someone. Do you get it? I'm not harassing you, so communication is key. Yeah, Mr. Me on radio, you, should, you understand that, yeah. You are, you are, you are, an, uh, OA, you are, o, you are an OAP, right? So you understand that communication is key. So understand communication tonight. Seven percent are actually is actually the words you're saying. Thirty-eight percent, the voice with which you said it, how you said it, the pitch, the tone of your voice, right? And um, lastly, the body language. But the, the body language is what fifty-five percent. So tonight, from tonight, pay attention to all these things. These things will help you. You know, these things would help you. I'm going to stop. I'm going to take one more. Then I'll stop at that so that we can have questions. So we can have questions tonight. So communication is key. How do you communicate to your team? How do you even communicate to your spouse? Sweetheart, um, my boss has called me. I, I, I know we're supposed to go out together. But please uh, permit me. You know, to quickly go and do this for my boss. Do not forget, trust me, you don't sow honor and reap dishonor. It's not possible. Yeah. You may say how much is the pay. Forget, don't look at the pay. Yes. Don't look at the pay. Do what you got to do. Did you get that? Don't look at the pay. Don't use the money the person is paying you to rate how loyal and how, you know, you will serve the person. No, don't do that. Do your work as unto the Lord. It may not be that person that will pay you. It may be someone that is observing you. It may be someone that has been watching you. It may just be a referral you're going to get. So please, please, please. This is so key. Communication, it's so key. How do you talk to your wife? You know, how to communicate to your team members. How to talk to your principal. Yeah, how to talk to your principal. And uh, the, the last one I'm going to talk about tonight um, is, permit me, I will talk about one more. Because one more, if I don't put that last one, it's not going to be a balanced talk tonight. Manage your art. Ability to manage your art is one of the good qualities of a protocol officer. You are going to be hot. Trust me. You will receive a lot of art. You are going to be hot. You know, people will say bad things about you. People will, you know, talk down on you. People would report you to your principal. People will lie against you. You could even have, you know, maybe aides are envying you. Your colleagues in the office, maybe they are envying you. You must learn to manage your heart. It's so key. Yes, it's one of the things that makes, you know, one of the qualities that makes a good protocol officer ability to manage your heart and not be offended the principal will offend you yes they will offend you the principal will offend you that's the truth people will offend you your colleagues will offend you team members will offend you uplines will guests will offend you yes guests will offend you so you've you've got to be able to manage your heart Manage your heart. Manage your heart. Right. Manage your heart. It's so key. See, if you don't get anything tonight, get this one. You need to manage your heart. Trust me, people are eyeing the office you are occupying. And they want to throw you out of that office at all costs. And they're going to lie at you. They're going to lie on you. They're going to say what you did not do. Maybe you even did them. Maybe, well, you know, maybe you had a good art. You know, you could have a good art and, be do, and do a bad thing. And your art can be right and you could do a bad thing, but you have a good art. It all depends. So managing your art is so important. Managing your art because offense will come. I tell you the truth. In this work, you will be offended. Your principal will offend you. You know, but, you know, somebody said something um, sometime last year. I was in a training and someone said something, you know, uh, that... The person that will offend you is someone that is close to you. 
Now, for example, you know, you all are seeing me as a very good person. I'm a very good person. Trust me. I'm a very, very good person. Um, come and ask my staff. Ask the people I'm privileged to lead in my local church. And, you know, ask people around me. Around, around. They will tell you I'm a good person. <laughs> but trust me, you know, when there's work time and we need to achieve a particular thing, yeah, I push them. I push them. I push them too. I push them. Even today, yeah, I still, I still, even yesterday, I was still talking to a couple of people, you know, on, on, on my team, and I said, hey, guys, if I had offended you, apologize. Yeah. A leader apologizes. It was a big deal there. Apologize and get them to do the work. That is what is key. <laughs> right. You know, you, you just, you, that, you know, something happened. I, was, I followed the principal to, to somewhere in the East, and um, this particular protocol officer wasn't following instruction wasn't following instruction. Guess what I did? I called him up and I said, hey, the next time you did, because I've been giving him, you know, opportunities to change and, and he wouldn't change. And it was affecting the work. It was affecting the work. And I hate to see failure in my work. I don't like it. I don't like uh, lack of coordination. I hate them. I want everything to be excellently done. Yes. So when this thing, when I wasn't getting that result I wanted, guess what I did? I called him and I, hey! Next time you do that, I'm going to come, I'm going to stop this convoy, and I'm going to come to you, you know. That's what I told the person. But eventually, by the time the assignment was done, when I was leaving that state, and as he was following me to the airport, right, as we got to the airport, I went to meet him, and I hugged him, and I apologized, and I said, I didn't mean it, I just wanted us to get our job done. Right, so, you have to be able to manage your ass. It's so key. It's okay. Managing your art is one of, you know, when you can do that, it shows you are a good protocol officer. Do not forget tonight, we are looking at qualities of a good protocol officer. Qualities of a good protocol officer. The last one I'm going to talk about tonight, and I'll quickly take our questions, is prayer. Somebody is saying, why are you Christianizing this? I am not Christianizing it. Whatever you believe, whatever you are calling upon, You've got to pray. Prayer is key. You've got to pray for your principal. Yes. Mm -hmm. You pray for your principal. When last did you pray for him? When last did you pray for him? Make it a point of duty. Do not just protect them physically. Protect them in the spirit. Yes. You've got to learn to envelope them. I'm a Christian. So if you're watching me tonight, I'm a Christian. So I'm going to talk based on my faith. Envelope them with the blood of Jesus. Yes. Cover them with the blood. Use the scripture Job 1 to pray for them. That the Lord built a wall of fire around them. The Lord built an edge of fire around them. Mm -hmm. Prayer is key. That thing you are complaining about in your office, have you prayed about it? That person that is giving you issues, that guy that is envying your position, have you prayed for him? Have you waged war in the spirit? See, I've seen a lot of protocols that are doing like this, and they, they are zero percent in the spirit. They are zero percent. They're going to take you down. You think if somebody wants to come and attack your principal, they won't look for you first? You are the first target. If they get you, they will get him. Did you get that? If they get you, they will get him. So you've got to hold your place in the place of prayer. Prayer, thank you, Bishop, Bishop Shayani, thank you. It's a kingdom strategy. Fantastic. It's, it's so key. Never get over-educated that you drop prayer. As a protocol officer, you know you don't carry arm. Prayer is your arm. As a protocol officer, you don't carry arm. You don't have AK-47. You don't have M M15. You don't have M14. You don't have all of those, right? So what do you have as your, as your rakata? It's prayer. So prayer is so key. And then don't look down on prayer. Prayer is key. You can pray for your principal. It's so important you pray for him. Pray for, his, for your work. And all those fighting you, put them in, they are in the place where they belong. Yes. Uh, put them, put them in, in where they belong. Pray on them. Take care of them with prayer. Did you copy that? So, it's so, so key. It doesn't matter what is going on. Prayer is the advantage of 
a protocol officer. So tonight, I've just given us a couple of uh, qualities, prayer as one of it. Second one is to manage your art. Yes, you have to manage your art. It's so key. The third one I, I spoke about is you must learn to be a good communicator. Yes, and the ability to manage your spouse, right? Manage your team, manage your boss, manage his office, manage your, the, the aides, right? It's so important. I've also said tonight that you know, one of the qualities of a good protocol officer is that he's sacrificial. Yes, because this job requires a lot of sacrifice. It requires a lot of sacrifice. I've also said tonight that one of the good qualities of a protocol officer is you put your money in it to get good clothes, get good training, come for the making of a seventh star protocol officer, register for the three day school of protocol and etiquette, right? Go on Coursera, there are a lot of courses there. Go every, there are courses everywhere, right? Register for all these courses. You know, I've also told you to invest in your dressing. Yes, don't wear coats, don't wear shoes. Wear suits, eh, not shoot, not shoot or oh, coats. You understand? Wear good suits, nice suits. If you cannot wear, if 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 you cannot wear, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, give me the names. If you cannot wear a designer now, right? Wear the local ones. Trust me, right? Appearance, you know, have your hair cut. Friction is key. It, it's so important. I've also told you that patience is a virtue. When it gets to protocol, patience is a virtue. I've told you that one of the qualities of a good protocol officer is that time, quality time, it gives qual it puts quality time in his work. I also said tonight that you know one of the good qualities of a protocol officer is ability to adapt to stress. That will be it tonight. Thank you so much for joining. Um, myself, Ademola de Tiberu, like as you know, I'm I am the director of protocol of the Barricade Academy. I am also the chief executive officer of the Barricade Executive Protection. We provide premium protocol and close protection to VIPs, government diplomats, government officials, and top executive officers. This is what I do. And um, thank you for joining me tonight. I will just quickly, you know, go on, take one or take some questions. We still have a few more. We still have about 10 minutes to go. I'll just take questions quickly now. Uh, what did you study in the university and what department were you back in the secondary school? Okay, that has nothing to do with what I'm talking about tonight. So could we just, can we just leave that? Do, do protocol officers go on leave? Now, protocol officers, well, the truth about it, it depends. If you have, if you have, um, if you are, if you are much, you have good numbers in your office, why not you can go and leave? It's possible. It's possible to go and leave. But the truth about it is that um, um, your boss is a good, is a kind person. He sure would look for opportunities. Those opportunities may be three days break, you know, one week leave, not three months, not two months. You're not giving birth. You're not a pregnant woman, right? So you're not taking maternity leave. There's no paternity leave. When it comes to protocol officer, it all depends, right? Seeing the cost, let me, I, I want to take the question from Ambition Firm. It says, seeing that the cost of maintaining a close protection officer in a retainer is quite expensive, would you advise a client to use a CPO? I don't understand your question. You said, cost of maintaining a close protection officer in a retainer is expensive. Would a CPO is still a close protection officer? A CPO is a close protection officer. The truth about it is that security is expensive. Let me tell you the truth. Security is expensive. It's too expensive. So if, 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 you, if they want it, they need to pay for it. Right. If they want it, they need to pay for it. Do you know that, um, do you know our colleagues, the, my colleagues in the UK, um, do you know what they call it per hour? Yeah. Do you know what they call it per hour? They call it about a thousand pounds an hour by a thousand pounds, between 800 and 1,200 pounds an hour, not per day. So close protection, you know, that person, it's, it's not, it's not, we are not protocols. It's a higher level of protocol. So the truth about it is that it's too expensive because you are thinking of security, you are thinking of administration, yeah. As you're thinking of security, you are thinking of administration of the principal, 
Yeah, because you are the one responsible for him. You are the one that will administer, make sure everything goes well. You are doing protocol, so it's it's expensive. Um, what question again? I hope I answered your question, the ambition frame. If not, we can talk. Give me a call and let's talk. Uh, I just asked. I just. I asked that to guide me to be a protocol. I asked that to guide. Well, I studied estate management in school. I didn't study protocol, right? I studied estate management in school, so I'm not doing. I'm not selling house to you tonight, am I? <laughs> Where would you advise a client to use a CPU? I, I'm a close protection officer. A client should use CPU at every time. Every time a client should use CPU. It's so important. Uh, you don't want a bad thing to have happened before you realize you could have paid just a hundred thousand, one fifty thousand, two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand, half a million era, one million era, you know, to protect someone. Do you understand? So I would advise you should, you know, at every point in time, as a client. Now let me quickly say this: a client can be your principal, a client can also be the person that brings the job to you. So the client can be the principal that you are protecting, the client can also be someone that is giving you a principal to protect. So, my advice, you should always use us, yes. As a protocol officer, must your dress code always be corporate? Yes, your dress code should be corporate, but now I need to say this, when you know that your principal is likely to wear native, when you know native, for those of us out in Nigeria, we wear native, that's our local, that's our, uh, what's it called now? Uh, the local wear, you know, in Africa, in Nigeria, is called native. Maybe one of these days I'm going to wear it, right? Um, if if you know your principal is going for a function, and they are all wearing native there, and you don't want to be exposed, because if you are wearing suit there, they can easily tell that you're a protocol officer. They can tell you're a close protection officer. So it depends on where it's going, right? But most of the time, I'm always on suit yeah most of the time it's better to be corporately dressed however i've done native with my some of my principals when i when i know where we're going we're going there you know maybe we are they're wearing native and i don't want to you know for everybody to put their eyes on me right to say get that guy down then you can get this man so i blend in so you must learn to do that how do you manage a principal who does not value the office of a protocol hmm that's a very big question. The truth about it is that most of our principals, as of now, they do not value protocols. Yeah. Most of our principals, as of now, don't value protocols. They value you when something has gone wrong and probably you step in that period, you know, to quickly correct it. Right? And, um, but one thing I'm going to say is that keep doing what you're supposed to do. Yes. As a protocol officer or as a close protection officer, Keep doing what you're supposed to do, irregardless of your principal, whether he values you or not. He will get to understand. Don't worry, over time it will change. Mm. Over time, he will understand your value, you know, while you are with him, while you do what you do. You know, I, you know there was a particular time um, um, I had a principal that had some other assistant. So there was a time you, this particular principal of mine, you know, would go with someone else. He would go with someone else, you know, for functions, and he would not go with his protocol officer, but he would go with someone else, right? Now, I've never felt bad about that because I serve at the pleasure of my principal. So if you do not ask me to come, then there's no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go there. I wouldn't do that. I don't do Puma, you know, the, I don't do that. Now, so this particular day, he was going somewhere, and where he was going was so, was so important, right? And he would call and say, at are they more like you are the one I'm going with? And I'm like, why me? Why not go with the other person you've been going with all the while? But trust me, right? He said something. He said, Where we are going, I cannot take a child or someone that behaves childishly to the place. So it means the person understands that no, this guy would, this guy understand his job. He knows what to do. So just keep doing what you're, 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 you know you want to, you are supposed to do. And trust me, um, your principal will value you eventually. Any other question before we go tonight? I'm looking for questions. Okay, there's one here. 
how do you carry out protocol ship without arm as a protocol officer you're not supposed to carry arm get the police get the army get the dss get them to work with you right so that's just how to do it how do you carry out protocol ship without arms yes what is what you should do what we should all learn to do as protocol officers is you have to learn go for go for martial arts it's so important get to know how to collect a gun from someone that is pointing a, that will that may point a gun at you you should be able to know how to do that how to collect it without and you are not armed right come for the training the protocol the making of a seven star protocol officer will put you through you know actually the the three day school of protocol and etiquette also has a lot of practicals in it we are going to start that in july we're going to start that in july whether coronavirus is available or not we're going to start that in july we'll have social distancing when we're doing that do you copy that so i appreciate your effort of your worth of knowledge thank you thank you mr felix 2002 so the YouTube channel is Ademola Adetuberu. This video will be on the YouTube channel uh, tomorrow. Uh, so get on the YouTube channel Ademola Adetuberu. You would, you would, you you will see a lot of our materials. We're going to be putting a lot of materials there. Subscribe, click the subscribe button. Subscribe to it, and let's let's take this work to another level. Um, is there any best best pattern pattern on how to manage crowd? Of course, there are. There are. There are. There are. There are methods on how to manage patterns on how to manage crowd. But the the, the I will just give you one. One of it tonight is situation awareness. Situation awareness. Yes, situation awareness is key. Before the crowd comes on you, what were you doing that you did not see them coming? So you need to know what is happening around you. Then orders register for the training. Register for the making of a seven star protocol officer. To get the rest <laughs> thank you one million thank you so much thank you so much okay so do not forget registration is ongoing for the making of a seven star protocol officer please go on our go on the link go on the on the link on on our posts right L register for it and trust me i'm sure you you it's, it's going to be a great investment you will thank me that you registered for it um early bed closes early bed closes um, 38th of May, and the fee is 30,000 era. And if you are outside Nigeria, uh, it's, uh, it's um, 77 dollars. And if you are going to register and make payment from the 1st of June, then you would be paying 50,000 naira, 50,000 naira. And uh, if you are outside Nigeria, that will be 128 dollars. I want to see you in class. Let's take this to the next level. Thank you for joining tonight. Anyone, any more question before we go? Um, mm, can you state carefully the roles of protocol officer in religious setting? Okay, I just saw your question, uh, Nims Yella. Thank you for this question. Can you state carefully the roles of a protocol officer in a religious setting? Of course, the role, I, I would be, the time timer is up already, but I'll just give you one, which is what? Ensure there's orderliness in the church, in your church, yeah. Ensure there's orderliness, yes. Ensure there's orderliness. And maybe some other time we're going to treat that because of our time. The time is fast going. Thank you so much for joining tonight once again. I appreciate I remain at the Mola de Tiberu. Have a good one. Thank you.